Hello, Kentucky librarians. Emily Northcutt here to guide you through a few things that you have been asking questions about regarding our 2020 virtual summer refresher. Today, I'd like to answer some of the frequently asked questions that we have been receiving and hopefully be able to give you more details on how everything is supposed to work on Tuesday, July 14th. So, question number one. I paid for my registration. Yay! Now, how do I access the 2020 Virtual Summer Refresher? Well, let's take a little journey, friends. The easiest way that I know to get to our Summer Refresher content from the main Kentucky Librarians Mighty Network is to visit the left-hand side of the screen and go to Groups. When you click on Groups, you're going to see the logo and title for the Summer Refresher. Go ahead and click that. And then you'll know that you're in Summer Refresher content when you see the purple banner at the top of your page and almost all of the other buttons turn purple. So purple means you're in the right place. One of the things that you might want to consider if you are planning to attend virtual summer refresher sessions from your own library, you're going to need to make sure that the Castle Librarian Network has been unblocked. When we first started doing things back in May and June, we found that most school districts had the platform blocked. So please make sure that you put in a request with your IT folks on Monday to be able to check and make sure that you're going to be able to access everything. Question number two. How do I get to a session during the day on July 14th? Again, let's take a little trip. Getting to your session should be really easy once you are inside the Summer Refresher group. Remember, you're looking for purple banners to make sure that you're in the right place. So from here, what you're going to want to look for is the topic section on the left hand side of the screen. When you click on topics, then you're going to get a list of all the different types of things that you might be looking for. So if you are looking for concurrent sessions, go to the block for the concurrent session that you need. Click on that title. And then you're going to get an article listing the time frame, just as a reminder. And then when you open it, if you, it's going to give you all of the session descriptions that are going to happen during that concurrent session time block. So, for example, say you want to go to Jillian Anderson's session on tips and tricks for working smarter, not harder. I, I probably need to go to that myself. If it is between 11 a.m., whoop, I'm sorry, that is totally wrong. <laughs> if it is between 10 and 11 a.m. Eastern and 9 to 10 a.m. Central, then when you click on that link, then Jillian or her moderator should be waiting to let you into that Zoom session. During that same time frame, if you want to go to Amanda Cole's session on Grab and Go STEAM Lessons for Littles, then you're just going to click on that Google Meet link and then Amanda or her moderator will let you in. On Tuesday, there will also be a fully linked version of the session matrix that is here if you go to discovery then it's going to be a featured post this is our regular session matrix but in order to, for security purposes we are not 
distributing the linked version of the session matrix until right before our event starts. Question number three. I've never used Crowdcast before, and that's where the keynotes are. Do you have any tips? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. One of the things that you can do is you can test your device setup at www.crowdcast.io forward slash setup. This is going to give you an idea of whether your device is going to give you a good experience using Crowdcast. You can also register and watch any of the previous Crowdcasts that we've done about ebooks. That would give you an idea of what a Crowdcast experience is like. There's also an attendee reference guide that we've been sharing in the ebook session descriptions or that you could just Google. I know that your Google skills are strong. You're librarians. Crowdcast is also available as a Google or iOS app and you could use that as something to watch the Crowdcast on. You might not be able to maybe participate in the chat or other things quite as easily on a smaller device, but I'll bet that for some, for a lot of us, our phones are probably the most technologically up-to-date device that you have handy, so that is also an option that you might want to consider. When you're in a Crowdcast, these are some of the things that you're going to see. There is a Q&A box that's going to be right about where that question arrow is. There's going to be an option for polls. We're going to try to include some interactive things in our keynotes. I'm currently working with our keynote presenters to make that happen. And then, of course, there's the chat box. If you ask a question in the chat box, we will try to move it to the Q&A box. But inside of the Q&A box, you can also upvote what questions you would like the presenter or keynote speaker to address at the end of the session. So that is the Q&A actually is very interactive in a Crowdcast. This is one of our ebook sessions that we did in the last few weeks in Crowdcast. So, if I'm going to use it as an example of what you can expect for our keynote presentations, the chat during the event will be active. Down here at the bottom, if you go to the ask a question section, you can upvote questions you can post session view the answers to the question so if you wanted to go into our discovery section of the main network remember this is black and not purple purple is the refresher black bars mean it's the regular main network but you can go to one of these past sessions and check it out. That is the really cool thing about Crowdcast. Crowdcast is recorded and you can register and attend it at any time on your own time. You can play it. You can see all the things that people said. I'm probably going to throw out a poll. Lots of things to see and do. Question number four. How do I access the virtual vendor hall during SR20 on July 14th? Well, it's very similar to what we we're already talking about in regard to visiting sessions. So let's take a look at that. Accessing and visiting our vendors is very similar to how you're going to go to sessions. So my recommendation is that you go to topics on the left hand side of the summer refresher group pages, which as I mentioned before are purple. So you click topics and then scroll down 
to the virtual vendor hall topic. And in the virtual vendor hall, you're going to see all of our sponsors grouped by their level of sponsorship. So if you were wanting to spend some time with this vendor, then you would click on their page and you could see what they are offering during the day when they are available. And when it's time to be able to talk with them or schedule something, then you can do that. So KT is our diamond level sponsor. Of course, Kate, we couldn't do most of the things that we do here in Kentucky without KT support. So we are very grateful that they are one of our friends. We have a variety of vendors who are offering a variety of products and if there are some people are attending live some people are not attending live you may be able to just go in and fill out a form and request for a vendor to contact you afterwards but a lot of our um silver level and above, and even some of our, of our friend level vendors are going to be available to you. You may want to go and visit with them during the lunch block. So they will definitely be available during the lunch block. And some of them have chosen to also provide other times that you can visit. Question number five. How will PD certificates be distributed? Can I get one if I'm not there on July 14th? Well, we this is sort of a work in progress and uh, we really hope to ask for your patience with this, but the form link for getting a PD certificate for the full day of SR20 will be shared at the closing session slash castle business meeting. So if you are in the castle business meeting at the end of the day on the 14th, then you'll get first access to that link. Otherwise, we will share it after we will share it again in the SR20 group on after the business meeting has concluded so forms for on-demand pd for sessions that you might watch after the actual live refresher will also be made available as a featured link in the sr20 group soon after our event concludes so if you are not able to be with us on the 14th or sometime next month when you're like oh gosh there was a session on the matrix that was about this thing that i need to learn in order to be successful then you can revisit and generate your own certificate for that so that that is all again a work in progress to get access to your pd certificate after the event then there are a couple of places to look on the discovery section in the left hand side of the network page you can look under featured it will be added as a featured link there it will also be added to the general information topic so those are two locations that you can use after the conclusion of the refresher to look for your pd certificate the form for PD certificates is going to look like this. So that's how you'll know you're in the right place. Question number six, when will session recordings be accessible? Well, when we get the recordings from our presenters, then they're gonna have to be translated into a unlisted videos in Castle's YouTube channel. After that, the unlisted links will be placed where the live links actually are right now for July 14th. So as soon as possible after our presenters share those recordings with Castle, 
then we will go through the process of translating them into linkable things. Now, the crowdcasts, those are actually going to be available for replay about five minutes after that session concludes because that's the way that platform works. So if you are interested or have any questions, you know, just ask. Bonus, did you know that the KY Librarian's Mighty Network is also available as a Google or iOS app? It is a great way to stay informed and to keep tabs on what's going on. You can also send direct messages or chats to other people who are members of the network. Anyone who is an attendee at the Summer Refresher definitely is a member of the network. And there are over 400 people who have joined. So I'll bet if you type somebody's name in the search bar up at the top, you will find that person and you can send them a direct message. Thank you for joining us for our annual professional development event. We hope that you have a great experience with this new and different summer refresher and that you'll be open to more virtual events in the future. We are all looking forward to seeing you online on July 14th.